Welcome to another Ziva math video. In this video, we're going to practice the steps for dividing a decimal by a whole number, paying close attention to placing the decimal point correctly in our quotient, and accurately completing the division steps. Let's take a look at our first example. Our first example, we have 8 and 72 hundredths divided by 4. So that's our 8 and 72 hundredths will go on the inside because we're dividing that by 4, which will be placed on the outside. Then our first step is to bring our decimal point straight up so that it's in the correct place in our quotient, so that as we work step by step and digit by digit through our division steps, the decimal point's in the right place. Now those steps are to divide, multiply, subtract, and bring down. So first we're going to divide 8 by 4. 8 divided by 4 is 2. Then we multiply. 2 times 4 is 8. Next we subtract. 8 minus 8 is 0. And then I'm going to go to the next digit and I'm going to bring that 7 straight down. And because I'm bringing a number down, I have to start with my division step again. So now I have 7 divided by 4. 7 divided by 4 is 1. I brought the 7 down, so the 1 goes above the 7. 1 times 4 is 4. So I've divided, I've multiplied. Now I need to subtract. 7 minus 4 is 3. And then I still have the 2 in my problem, so I need to bring the 2 down. Because I'm bringing the 2 down, I have to start all of these steps again. So I have 32 divided by 4, so I start back with my division step. 32 divided by 4 is 8. 8 times 4, because we multiply next, is 32. After I multiply, I subtract. When I subtract 32 minus 32, I have 0. I don't have any more digits in my dividend, so I'm finished. So my quotient is 2 and 18 hundredths. Our next example, we have 60 and 12 hundredths divided by 3. So the 60 and 12 hundredths goes on the inside because we're dividing that by 3. And our first step again is to bring the decimal point straight up so we have it in the right place in our quotient so we can carefully work through our steps and have our digits and our decimal point in the correct places. So after I bring that decimal point straight up, I'm going to start with division. 6 divided by 3 is 2. And I multiply. 2 times 3 is 6 subtract, I get 0. Then the next step is to bring down. So remember, it's divide, multiply, subtract, and then bring down. I'm bringing a 0 down. And if I bring a number down, I have to start all of those steps again. So I have 0 divided by 3. 0 divided by 3 is 0. Because I brought the 0 down, when I divide, my 0 is going to go above that 0 in my quotient. 0 times 3 is 0, and I subtract, I get 0. So I've divided, I've multiplied, I've subtracted, and now I'm at the step of bringing down. So I'm bringing down the 1. And because I'm bringing a number down, I start all those steps again. 1 divided by 3 is 0. That 0 goes above the 1 because that's what I just brought down. 0 times 3 is 0. So I've divided, I've multiplied, I need to subtract. 1 minus 0 is 1, and then if I have anything left to bring down, I bring it down. I do, I have the 2, so I'm going to bring the 2 down, and I'm going to start all of those steps again. So 12 divided by 3, 12 divided by 3 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12, so I've divided, I've multiplied. Now I need to subtract. 12 minus 12 is 0, and I don't have any more digits in my dividend, so I am done here. So notice as I work through my problem, I brought the decimal straight up, and then with every digit, I made sure I lined up the numbers in my quotient so they're in the right place. So my quotient is 20 and 4 hundredths. Our next example, we have 3 and 81 hundredths divided by 5. So the 3 and 81 hundredths goes on the inside. I'm dividing that by 5, so the 5 goes on the outside. 
and our steps remain the same. I need to place the decimal point in the correct place in my quotient, and I'm going to do that by bringing it straight up. Then I can work digit by digit to place the digits in the quotient in the correct place. So if I look at 3, dividing 3 by 5, that's 0. So I'm going to be dividing 38 by 5. 38 divided by 5 is 7. So I'm placing the 7 over the 8. And because this decimal point is there, we need to put the 0 in front of it, as that's how we write our numbers. Then I have 7 times 5 is 35. And I subtract, and I get 3. So I've divided, I've multiplied, I've subtracted. My next step is to bring down. So I'm bringing down the 1. So dividing again, 31 divided by 5 is 6. The 6 goes on top of the 1, since that's the number I just brought down. 6 times 5 is 30. So I've divided, I've multiplied, I need to subtract. 31 minus 30 is 1. And I don't have anything else to bring down, but I have the 1 here. You're working with decimals, so we're not just putting remainder 1. We are going to add a 0 to our 3 and 81 hundredths. We're at the end behind the decimal. It's not changing any values. And now I have a number I can bring down to continue my problem. Because I brought a number down, I have to start by dividing again. 10 divided by 5 is 2. And 2 times 5 is 10. When I subtract, this time I do get 0. And I have nothing else to bring down. You do need to stop and consider whether you need to round. I always had my students round to the hundredths place. So if you are needing to round, we need to look at the digit in the hundredths place. That is the 6. The digit behind it is a 2. So I don't need to round it up. I will let it remain the same, so my quotient would be 76 hundredths. If you don't need to round, you need to leave your quotient at 762 thousandths. In each of my examples, I've used a one-digit divisor. All of these steps remain the same if your divisor is a two-digit divisor. In this example, we have 65 thousandths divided by 5. So the 65 thousandths goes on the inside, the 5 on the outside, and the first step is to bring that decimal point straight up so we have it in the right place in our quotient. We start with dividing. 0 divided by 5 is 0. Then 0 divided by 5 is 0 again until I get to 6 divided by 5. 6 divided by 5 is 1. So the 1 goes above the 6 because that's what I just divided. 1 times 5 is 5. So I've divided, I've multiplied, I need to subtract, I get 1. And then if I have anything to bring down, I need to bring it down. So I have the 5, it comes straight down. because so I'm bringing a number down, I have to start with my division step again. So now I have 15 divided by 5. 15 divided by 5 is 3. Multiply next. 3 times 5 is 15. Then I need to subtract. 15 minus 15 is 0. I don't have any other numbers to bring down. So I am finished here with a quotient of 13 thousandths. And the one thing worth noting on this example is how I lined everything up. I brought the decimal straight up, and what I was dividing by, whether it was 0 divided by 5 or 6 divided by 5, that determined where my digits went in my quotient. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to Ziva Math for more videos.